Hey guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. For those who've been with me for a while, you might remember how I was taking fabric and sewing it down, my scrap fabrics, and sewing it down to the calculator tape to make long strips of scrappy fabric to use for projects. After I made the original videos, I have made a few more where I showed different ways to use the paper, these strips of fabric. And during those videos, I always show you how to remove the paper. A few times a month, I still get a question, how do you remove the paper? And I had a request the other day for a video to show it. So instead of constantly sending people to watch an entire video on stitching different projects, I thought I would do a separate video today on how to remove the paper. I normally use this large roll of calculator paper. I bought uh, like a five or 10 pack on Amazon for a few bucks. This is three and a quarter inches. It's non-thermal, it tears easy, it's a little bit thicker and sturdier. But in a package of friend mail, I got one of these little individual, uh, this one's two and a quarter inch that you'd use for a calculator. I believe this is thermal though. If you can look at it, I'm not sure if the camera picks it up, but it has a blue tint to it. And what was really fun is when you put your iron to it, it turns this really fun mottled blue color. Only on one side. So I thought that was really fun to see. It, it shocked me a little at first since I'm using red and blue fabrics anyway, but that was a really fun thing to see. Before I get into tearing off the paper, I just wanna go ahead and review some of the things. This time, what I did is I took and measured out 20 inches on this because in the project I'm gonna work on next week, I don't need to have rolls and rolls of this and to deal with the whole roll at one time. So what I did is, I think I cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I cut eight of these, and I would start at one end, and I put this piece of fabric on this one, and before I took it out, I let that go to the back of my machine, and I chain pieced. And then I went ahead and I added this one, and added this one, and on and on and on. And eight to 10 is usually the most that I like to work with. And then when I'm finished, I go ahead and pull them all out. I, I iron them all over, and press all of these over, you can just hang finger press these if you like, but I really like to press them with the iron as I'm doing this. Any of my paper piece projects like this, like when you're doing string piecing, I like to go ahead and press them with the iron. It just, it keeps it from being too ripply in here and having too much excess. And I, I just, I just like it. It looks, it seems to lay flatter for me, but if it works for you to just finger press it, go for it. So then I cut them all apart and press them and then I go ahead and I put the next piece on and I went on and on until I got all the way to the end. Now since all my scraps are different widths, some of them were finished ahead of time. So by the time I got to the end, I might have only been using two or three strips. And this is what my strips look like when I'm done. This is the top piece as I'm feeding it into the machine and I always leave extra because as I'm chain piecing, I just kind of hit start sewing here. And then I just trim the fabric off and I don't worry about having too much because I've been saving all of these bits here for my crumb blocks or for another project I might want to do with little bits of scraps. Now for the project I'm working on, it doesn't matter if this is two and a quarter inches. It doesn't matter if it is exactly two and a quarter. Because I'm going for a completely scrappy and I'm not going for like a piano key border. So when I trim these, I just cut it right off. I flipped it and I put my ruler up against the paper again and just slid off this end. Now if you're worried about yours and you needed it exactly two and a quarter or two and a half, whatever your paper might happen to be, after you trim off your first edge, just go ahead and measure over. Like this is two and a quarter inch paper. So if I lined up my left side here on two and a quarter, then I can just trim across there and I know it's exactly right. One of the things I noticed with this paper is this one's a lot thinner than the one I'm used to using. And as I was sewing, it would go ahead and already start to tear. And I think because of that process, it got a little bit pulled to the side and went a little wonky. Because as you can see, I trimmed on this side, and then I noticed my paper kind of went like this. It had a little bow in the center. And I was figuring it's probably because as I was stitching, these got a little bit off kilter. So I just lined it up to the side at two and a quarter, and I just sliced it off. 
we're not using these papers, we're taking them off. So it doesn't really matter if your paper was only to here and you had this much. If you only had two and a quarter inch paper and you wanted two and a half, just make sure you got more than a half inch. I would probably put uh, three quarters to an inch off of one side. When you trim this side, you can line it up at two and a half and it doesn't matter if you have a quarter inch past your paper. This is only to keep everything nice and lined up and keep your biases from getting too wonky because when I sew long strips of thin scraps like this together, I tend to get pieces that wave like this. Now that's fun, I like wavy borders, but if I wanted a straight line, it wouldn't work. And since you saw that this one's already very, very easy, it just tore off as I was manipulating it through the machine. It shows you how easy it is to pull the paper off. If you choose, now I did not uh, shorten my stitch length for this because I know how this paper tears. And I, I, this one, I mean, I didn't know, of course, but I saw how quickly it tears. I know how easily this tears and I do not need to make my stitch length shorter for this. And this one's just, it's eh, just a little, little, little bit firmer and sturdier than this paper. So, but it's up to you. You'll know by the paper you're using. And it's really easy. I just kind of put my thumb next to the seam here and it pulls right off. If you give this fabric a little tug, put my finger back here and kind of push up with it like this pull down with this and it pulls the paper right off you just slide your finger in there and just like any type of when you're doing the paper piecing like all those really cool Harry Potter designs and the Marvel designs everyone's doing it just pulls off just like any other paper piecing see it was white and that's easy as it is just put your finger here Kind of pull this down paper pops off slide your finger through i do like to keep my thumb near the seam just in case any of the threads get stuck i don't want to be pulling on that seam i'd rather pull on this paper put a little netflix or youtube in watch a little movie and it peels off nice and simple in a group where a lot of people were doing the string blocks and they were actually letting their little five and six year old children pull the paper off so it comes off real easy it's not hard at all let's do one more I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and just to show how easy it is and then I'll tell you about this week's next week's project coming up well see how there's a little extra there I go ahead pop my finger in there and pop this seam pop the paper I should say and then all you have to do is just pick this paper out I'm still holding the thread in the seam so I'm not pulling out any of my stitches and if you were to pull any of your stitches out it's really easy just to take this back to the sewing machine run it through and redo that seam If you start at one end and it seems like while it's not difficult to pull off you find it's a little bit harder than the last one you did flip it around and do it the other way because sometimes I think maybe if your seams are all going this way that it pulls off a little bit easier that could be completely in my head so there I have nice two long strips they're about 20 inches and what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to use these to make some placemats. I've had a few requests to show how I make placemats. I don't make them a lot. Um, we're more of a sit down in the living room in front of the TV. It's just hubby and I. We don't have a dining room table anymore. We use placemats a lot when the kids were little, but I like those vinyl ones that they can draw on and it was easy to wash. But now that it's just hubby and I, like I said, we don't really use a placemat. So I don't make them too much, but I'm going to go ahead and make some for this next video. Because not only am I going to be making placemats, but I want to show you a different binding technique that works really well with placemats. But I don't want to tell you about it now. You have to come back next Friday and see what it is. So if you want to join me in making some scrappy strips, 
I'm going to use, I cut mine at 20 inches and I'm going to use three or four per placemat. Now I'm sure these are going to be much too long. Placemats, I, I was looking up the sizes and I know they're 17 inches long. So I thought as long as I had my strips long enough to go the length, then if I use some in the width, I will have left over. Because since they're all cut the same, we could very easily just put two together. So if we had scraps left over, you could just sew them together and you'd have new ones. So in a, and I, for if you're gonna do these for a quilt, it's much easier to handle the 20 inch length. You can just stitch them together and then use this for the whole length of a border, a piano key border for your quilt. And you wouldn't have to deal with that whole long strip of paper. Since these were the thermal papers, I went ahead and I'm going to be removing all of them from my strips. I am going to be using mine this week coming up, so they're not going to sit for very long. But I would be a little concerned that these could cause deterioration of your fabrics if they sat in your craft room for too long. So if you're going to go ahead and use some type of thermal paper, I would, after you sew them, I would go ahead and pull the papers off and then store them like this. As long as you're not stretching these and playing with them this way and causing any of these seams to come out of bias or stretch anyway. They're gonna be perfectly fine. I like to just go ahead and take them and put them in my plastic shoe boxes. And then I have them for whenever I wanna do a scrappy project. Because I have tons of red, white, and blue scraps, I'm still trying to go through all of these. So I'm going to be using white as my background fabric in my, um, in my placemat this week and red and blue for my strips. But feel free to use any types of fabrics you want. Batiks work really well in this process too because you'll just have a little bit of all the different color batiks. Okay, I'm starting to babble on too much now. I will see you guys next week. Bye!